The contents of this video is going to shock some of you guys. I'm going to drop the hydrogen bomb of truth. You have to be prepared. I'm going to tell you guys exactly how Canada arrived at this point in 2024. Why the country is completely falling apart to a dystopian nightmare. And I want to make something clear. I have nothing against the Indians. Many people are accusing me of a racism from a last Friday's video. I want to make something clear. Right now, the system is completely broken. These new batch of Indians who are coming to Canada, they're not coming as international students. The only reason why they're coming to Canada is because this is a two-year path to permanent residence. I'm going to explain the entire process and also why Canada must stop all immigration by uh, whatever means or the country is going to be completely destroyed. So uh, have a look at uh, this graph. This is Canada's population growth uh, throughout the years. Throughout all of Canada's history, Canada's population never increased by uh, more than uh, half a million in a single year. However, in 2023, Canada's population increased by 1.3 million. Now, I did mention the legal target for immigration last year was 450,000. Where did uh, the rest of the population growth come from? Well, have a look at uh, this chart. In 2023, Canada welcomed a record of 579,000 international students. 90% of the international students are coming from India. That is a fact. I remember I said this before. In 2015, the number of international students in Canadian colleges is at 100,000. In 2023, this number reached 700,000. That is a 700% increase over the course of eight years. And uh, all of this has happened. You notice the spike starting to happen in 2016. This is when Justin Trudeau took office. And uh, obviously, this is all part uh, of his plan. Have a look at uh, this. So the number of international students that's projected to come to Canada by 2027 is going to increase to 1.4 million. And uh, from these 1.4 million, between 1.2 to 1.3 million of these students are going to come from India. And on top of this, Canada is also welcoming legally 500,000 immigrants per year. And uh, if you add the refugees and the people who come here illegally, that means that Canada will have a net population gain of roughly 2.2 million people per year starting 2027. And that is every single year, year after year, decade after decade. This is why the program must be stopped. And if you're wondering why uh, there are so many Indian students coming to Canada to study, well, they're not coming here to study. I can tell you this because I went to Georgian College from 2018 to 2020. And uh, yes, how does uh, the government of Canada know that uh, by 2027, there's already going to be 1.4 million international students that's going to be arriving in Canada? Because many of these uh, Indian students, they apply many years ahead of time to get into Canada. If you actually walk around these college campuses, you will see that many of these students, they're not 18 or 19 year olds. They're actually 25, 30, 35, or even 40 year olds. This is a two year path to citizenship. They know exactly what they're doing. So for example, have a look at uh, this college campus. This is Canador College. Does that look like a college campus to you? Does that look like a place uh, where you go to Canada to study as an international student? So there's absolutely nothing. It's some uh, sketchy warehouse door. So let's say if your school year starts in September, so, so a group of students, they will arrive in Canada in either July or August. And and uh, they will show up to the front of this warehouse and they will knock on the door. So there's an Indian person that acts as an intermediary, whatever you want to call this guy. Let's just call this guy the Mumbai Prince. And, and he will say to these a new batch of uh, international students, he says that, welcome to Canada, welcome to Canada or college. This is our international business program. Now, have you paid uh, your tuition? If you're also wondering why Canada wants so many international students saying so bad, because international students, they pay three times the tuition versus domestic students. And as you can see uh, in 2022, international students brought a uh, record breaking revenue of uh, $22 billion into Canada's economy, into Canada's GDP. That's why these schools are so desperate to bring in a record number of international students. So once uh, these fake uh, students, uh, they pay their tuition, could be fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to this uh, Mumbai Prince and uh, to these uh, local Canadian colleges. They don't actually go to classes. They're giving a list of options by this uh, Mumbai Prince. 
you have the option to apply to go work at the Loblaws, the largest grocery store chain in Canada, or you can apply to be a security guard at a mall, or you can go work at Walmart, or become a cashier at McDonald's, or flip burgers at Burger King. You can work at Tim Hortons, you can work at a Subway, you can be a server at Boston Pizza. Yes, this is actually their two-year program in the international business. And all you do need to do from that point on is that uh, then you work for 1,560 hours. After you work uh, your 1,560 hours, you go to the Department of Immigration. You pay them $1,050 and you show them your fake two-year diploma from Canada or college. Then uh, within a few months time, you will get uh, your green card. You will get your permanent uh, residency to stay in Canada. Once again, these people are not international students. They know what, exactly what they're doing. The fee they're paying, the fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, that is the fee for them to get permanent residence in Canada. You have to wake up uh, to this reality. This has nothing to do with diversity. This has nothing to do with uh, respecting other people's cultures and their beliefs and religions. This is 100% a money laundering scheme. It's done by the Indians and it's done by Canadian colleges. This is a massive crisis. Look at uh, the increase in intake in number of international students across uh, some Canadian colleges. So, Loyalist College, the number of international students uh, increased by 4,671% in the course of uh, six years. So, Loyalist College is located in a small town called uh, Belleville. This is roughly uh, in the one hour north of Toronto. So, over the course of the last uh, six, seven years, they added an extra 10,000 Indian international students to the town's population. What do you think uh, that does uh, to the town's uh, housing market and the rental market? As a direct result of this, the town is in a state of emergency because uh, there's a zero housing vacancy rate. There's no housing, there's no room rental. Every single townhouse, every single uh, single detached home, every single condo, every single apartment is 100% full. And in just uh, six years, the rent in the town of Belleville increased by 250%. This is the issue. You have to think about uh, the entire picture because yeah, where are these people going to live? This is a major crisis and uh, it's completely destroying Canada. You wonder why your rent is so expensive. You wonder why your mortgage payment is so expensive. You wonder why uh, that uh, you will never be able to own a home in Canada. Have a look at uh, Fanshawe College in London, Ontario and also Western University. These two schools are right beside each other. So in 2022, Fanshawe College along with uh, Western University welcomed a total of uh, 11,000 international students from India. So London, Ontario roughly has 400,000 people. What do you think happens when you add 11,000 people from India in just one year? What do you think that does to the housing market? But uh, the school doesn't give a shit because you know why? These uh, 11,000 uh, students from India, they brought a record-breaking profit of $300 million to these schools. Uh, Conestoga College in Kitchener, Ontario, they did the same thing. They brought over 6,000 students from India in 2022. And as a direct result, just from these uh, 6,000 uh, in Indian international students, Conestoga College made $140 million in profit. But you see, this level of population increase will have severe consequences. So have a look at uh, this graph here. You guys see the massive dip in 2023 and 2024, up until 2022, Canada was building one housing unit for a population increase of uh, 1.7 people. And here we are in 2024, Canada is only building one new housing unit for an increase of 4.2 people. And by 2030, if this keeps up, Canada will only be building uh, one new housing unit for a net increase of 8 people. From 2017 to 2018, I lived in a small town called Stratford, Ontario. It has roughly 32,000 people. I worked at a factory. I was renting a studio apartment. I was paying $690 a month for a studio apartment. The parking fee was $25 a month. So the rental group was called the CLV Group. And uh, here is a screenshot. Okay, this is uh, the rent in 2024. I lived at uh, 25 Capelli Circle, apartment 503, a studio apartment. Look at the, the rental price in 2024, $1,400. Remember, $690 in 2018, $1,400 in 2024. Even the parking fee also doubled from $25 a month to $50 a month. 
this is what happens uh, when you have uncontrolled, unchecked levels of immigration. This is what happens when you have a population explosion and uh, not enough uh, homes are being built. Everybody is going to suffer. And if you're wondering how the hell do these uh, people who are coming from India, how can they afford these record high rental prices? Well, they can't. If you actually log on to Kijiji and uh, some of these websites where people are looking for rentals, many of these uh, Indian students, they're actually sharing mattresses. Look at what they found in Brampton. They found 25 male international students that, that's living in a basement in a Brampton home. So what they're doing is that uh, many people are illegally subletting uh, their houses and uh, their apartments. And uh, for the master bedroom, they'll put in uh, two mattresses. Let's say they'll put in uh, two king-size mattresses in there. And because the king-size mattresses are bigger, so they'll have three Indian guys that's sleeping on one mattress. And they'll have three other Indian guys that's sleeping on another mattress. And in the two uh, guest bedrooms, they'll put uh, two queen-size mattresses in there. And two Indian guys will sleep on one, and two Indian guys will sleep on another one. And in the dining room, there's no dining table. There's another king-size mattress where, uh, and where three other Indian guys will sleep on that mattress. And in the kitchen, there will also be another king-size mattress. And, and three other Indian guys will be sleeping in the kitchen. And on the couch, two Indian guys, uh, they will be sharing that couch. They will be snuggling each other while sharing that couch. And uh, in the living room, be another king-size mattress. There will be another three Indian guys that's sharing that mattress. And in the storage room, there will be a queen-size mattress. There will be two Indian guys in there. And uh, in the closet, there will be another Indian guy that's crammed into the closet with no mattress at all. That is how uh, these new arrivals, that's how these Indian people are living in Canada. Why are you guys so desperate to come to Canada to live this kind of lifestyle? This is the ultimate dystopian nightmare. And uh, I want to show you guys how much uh, the diarrhea has really hit the air conditioner since Justin Trudeau took office. Let's look at the average selling price of a one bedroom condo in uh, downtown Toronto. So this is in 2015. Remember uh, Trudeau took office in October of 2015. In 2015, the average price was roughly $275,000. Back then, it made sense for investors or, uh, let's say, an older couple to purchase that condo and to rent it out. Because, uh, let's do some math. So, the source is from uh, the Toronto Dominion Bank. So, back in 2015, the rate at TD Bank was 2.5%. Uh, and uh, if you purchased a one-bedroom condo for $275,000 at 2.5% interest rate for a 25-year mortgage, your average mortgage payment monthly was uh, $1,000 a month. How crazy does that sound? That was back in 2015. And the average rent in Toronto for a one bedroom apartment in 2015 was roughly $1,500. So if you purchase that, that uh, one bedroom condo and if you rented it out, you will have a net profit of $500 a month. Hey, that's not so bad for not doing anything, for just being a landlord. However, look at how much things have changed in 2024. Right now, the average price of a one bedroom condo in downtown Toronto has jumped to a $550,000 Canadian and the interest rate has been hiked to 6.8%. So right now, if you get a 25-year mortgage, your average monthly mortgage payment is roughly $3,000 Canadian. The average rent right now in Toronto for a one-bedroom apartment is $2,700 a month. Did I stutter? Yes, it is actually $2,700 a month. That's why so many of these Indian students, uh, they're sharing mattresses. So if you purchased uh, that property and uh, you rented it out uh, for $2,700 a month, you will have a net negative of $300 a month. This is a disaster. Who is going to want uh, that kind of a deal? And to people say, why don't you increase the rent even more? Well, you can only increase the rent so much before the entire market comes crashing down. This is a major issue. Because right now, Canada's 1.5% uh, housing vacancy rate, that's a mirage. Because right now, the vast majority of these condos in downtown Toronto and downtown Vancouver, they're sitting empty. In fact, uh, in Toronto, only 45% of these condos downtown are currently occupied. That's where Canada has that 1.5% housing vacancy. In reality, Canada is 100% full. And uh, it also does not make any sense for any uh, new investors or any potential landlords to be purchasing these condos. Because uh, look at uh, how much uh, the size of these one-bedroom condos have shrunk since the start of 2016. So these units are getting smaller and smaller. But uh, the prices have literally doubled. So Canada has entered uh, this new era where... Uh, 100% of the housing is full where nobody can afford uh, to buy a home and where nobody can even afford to rent a one-bedroom condo down in uh, downtown Toronto. 
So you have all of these homesteads being built, but all of them are sitting empty. While the homeless population keeps on increasing, this is a perfect recipe for disaster. So I want to come back to the point where I made it earlier in the video. Canada by 2027 is planning on bringing 1.4 million international students every single year. This is on top of uh, 500,000 legal immigrants every single year. And then if you add in the refugees and the legal immigrants, this is a net increase of 2.2 million people per year. So let's say from 2024 to 2026, Canada's population grows by 1.4 million for the next three years. And from 2027 to 2030, Canada's population will grow by 2.2 million per year. So this will mean that uh, by 2030, Canada's population will increase from its current 41.5 million to 53.6 million. And uh, right now, the white population Canada, it's at uh, roughly 25.3 million. This is not going to change because uh, almost all the immigrants and almost all the international students that's coming to Canada, none of them are white. So this means that uh, by 2030, the white population Canada will decrease to just 47%. European Canadians will become a minority in Canada. Back in 1981, Canada was 96% white. And uh, roughly 20% of Canada's population will be made up of Indian people. And the Native Americans amongst the other immigrants will make up roughly uh, the other 33%. That's Canada in 2030. Imagine Canada in 2060. Never mind the uh, Europeans becoming a minority in Canada. Okay, let's throw all of that aside. Let's talk about the real issue because at the end of the day, the vast majority of Canadians are going to be non-white. So this is going to affect you guys if you're watching as a person that is not white. Especially if you live in Canada because Canada is about to welcome 2.2 million people per year. But Canada is only building 240,000 houses a year at the moment. So if this trend continues by 2030, Canada's housing vacancy rate will be negative 7%. Do you know what that means? That means that every single home is going to be 100% full. And also, 7% out of 53 million. That means that uh, there's going to be roughly 3.7 million people that is going to be homeless in Canada. Do you guys not see uh, how crazy this is? It is not possible for, to find a place for these people to live due to the population explosion. This is why all of this needs to get shut down. Because that's where you're looking at. The vast majority of uh, new arrivals uh, coming to Canada, they're looking for uh, the Canadian dream. They just think uh, this is the best country in the world. The best case scenario is that uh, you will find yourself sharing a mattress with uh, two other Indian guys. The worst case scenario, you're going to be uh, homeless. You're going to be sleeping on the streets during the cold and harsh Canadian winter. That is going to be the reality for at least uh, 3.7 million Canadians if this operation does not get shut down. This is what Justin Trudeau has done to this country. This has all happened since he took office. This also means that uh, there's going to be a record a number of young men who are uh, living below the poverty line, who are going to be completely broke, who will have uh, no hope in the future. The lucky ones uh, will be able to live at home while with their parents. The unlucky ones will simply be homeless. No woman in this world, despite the fact that they keep talking about equality, no woman in this world will marry a guy that's broke. No woman will marry a guy who is going to be making less money than them. So what happens when you create an entire generation, tens of millions of young men who are completely broke, will never have any hopes for the future of owning a home, who are forced to stay at home with their parents, who are forced to sleep in their car, who are forced to be homeless. Yeah, nothing could go wrong with that, right? That is the picture perfect recipe for disaster. The next generation of young men, they're either going to be extremely depressed or they're going to be extremely angry. They're going to be vicious. They're going to turn rageful. They're going to turn violent because uh, what have they got to lose? Canada is going to turn into the purge anarchy. That's where Canada is going. And uh, this is why if you have the opportunity, you need to get the hell out of Canada.